Well, if you've been following the news, you know it's been a violent week in Canada's largest city. In the past 12 days, five people have been shot and killed in Toronto. And as of last Sunday, there have been 162 shootings in Toronto this year. That's an 11% increase from the same time last year. Joining us to talk about the surge of gun violence is former Toronto homicide detective Mark Mendelson. Good to have you back with us on your morning. Good morning. I imagine you've been asked this question a lot in this last week. What's going on in Toronto? This is a cyclic, cyclical event that, that, that we, we have every year. Uh, at some point in the year, there's a rash of, of shootings. You can't predict these things. If we could predict where these shootings were taking place and where these murders were taking place, there wouldn't be any. Um, it's, I, I always think that, the, you know, we talk about the summer of the gun and it always seems to happen around the spring and the summer. And I think it's just people are out and, and if, if we just realize the point that most of these shootings are probably drug involved, uh, that this is when the settling of scores take place. Um, it doesn't take much to get somebody upset to the point where they want to shoot somebody in that drug culture because respect and fear is, is primary to you being able to do your business uh, efficiently as a drug dealer. So if you've been disrespected, if you've been ripped off, now is the time when they settle the scores. I worked with an assignment editor once who said when the temperature goes up, the gun shootings go up. Absolutely, because they're all coming out. Everyone's coming out. They're working the streets. They're getting their gangs and their crews. And, and this is not a black or white issue. This is, this is, this is people all across the, the city who are involved in these in, in these types of crimes. And what we're seeing is that, at least this year, is they're, they're a lot more brazen than they've been in, in years past. We've got the shooting in Yorkville. We've got the, uh, the, the shooting on Wellington Street in the financial district, in the, uh, in the parking garage, um, Young and Dundas. So this is what I wanted to ask you. People who are walk watching from outside the city, if you live in the city, you still feel safe in the city. But if you are planning to come here for the summer, and all I've seen is Young Dundas, which is a major tourist spot, Yorkville, which is a tourist spot, there are gun deaths in those areas. Should people be concerned that this isn't just staying in certain pockets or neighborhoods? The settling of scores is happening in major populated areas. And they're targeted shootings. The one in Yorkville was a targeted shooting. He walked right up to him and put a bullet in his head. The guy in the financial district was shot 20 times in that parking garage. These are targeted killings. And I think... You can only take reasonable precautions. We live in a city of over four and a half million people on, on any given day. Um, you can't live in a bubble. And the people that are being killed have some connection to some nefarious activities. Uh, otherwise, they wouldn't be targeted to be killed. So we have to live our lives. What does it say, Phil, that the targeted shootings are happening in areas where people are going about their everyday lives? They're not happening, you know, in the entertainment district. They're not happening in certain neighborhoods. They're happening downtown. I think they're sending a message that we can get you and we can do anything we want, wherever we want, and we have no fear of repercussions. And I think it, that's a very sad comment, but t for us that live here, you take reasonable precautions, you're alive to your surroundings, uh, and what more can you do? You just keep living. Well, let's take a look at gun deaths across the country overall. Uh, you know, the stats show that if you take the U.S. out of the equation, we have some of the highest rates of gun deaths uh, in the world. We're more than twice the rate of Australia, 10 times out of the U.K. So my question is, is this about violence? Is this about policing? Or is this about guns coming into the country? It's about guns coming into the country. They're coming from the states, um, primarily. Uh, it's, it, it's, it, it, you look at the gun laws in the UK and Australia, they're, they're even more strict than ours are, and ours are pretty good in terms of gun laws. Um, this is just a comment on, on, on the nature of, of drugs, and this is how drug disputes are settled. They don't, they don't go into mediation. They don't sit and talk. It's about respect. If I don't kill you because you disrespected me, I will be killed mm. because the message is that I'm weak. And it's unfortunate, but it's reality. Well, Public Safety Minister Ralph Goodell at the summit that happened in March on guns and gangs uh, called for immediate action. He said he wanted to see, uh, he was concerned about the rise in gun violence in Canada. There's already been 165 shootings. So if you're uh, looking at this as a gun, is, uh, as a crime problem, as a drug uh, problem, Canadians what does the government need to do or can they do anything? Well, they have to give resources uh, to policing. I mean, this, you know, uh, the, issue, uh, the bad guys uh, don't know borders. So they don't know the difference between Toronto's police services border and the Peel Regional border and the Durham Regional border. I mean, these guys go where they want to go. So there has to be this... The sort of joint force efforts that take place. This costs money. This takes resources. Um, 
you need intelligence. This is a, a, a very timely, labor-intensive uh, type of work to, to gather this type of criminal intelligence. Somebody's got to put it together. It's not for lack of investigating. I can assure you, I can assure you, at least in Toronto, all of these murders are being heavily investigated by the homicide squad, but there's only so much of them as well. And we have MacArthur on the back burner. We have other major homicides in the back burner. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a matter of resources. It's a matter of communication. It's a matter of money. Is this a problem that's going to get worse before it gets better? I, I, we've noticed over the last couple of years the trend is it just sort of dips off. I mean, the bad guys don't like it when the police are on them either. And the heat's on them and the, and the microscope is on them. They get concerned too, so they level off. So hopefully we're starting to see the end of this bad trend. Good to have you in on this this morning. Thanks so much, Mark. Always a pleasure. Let's check in with Ben.